Good life. Good life. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, we'll move forward with the questions. If you have questions here, we have one, and if not, from online. Mm-hmm. I can sit down to Inshallah ta'ala, brothers and sisters, please don't forget about the upcoming release of our long-awaited training manual, The Way of the Disciple. The Way of the Disciple, inshallah ta'ala, will be available soon enough. Many questions that brothers have with regards to studying, memorizing, traveling, teaching, etc. You can find all of those thoughts, ideas, experiences codified in the book and the way of the disciple. In the night time, Zakhno Khaidah for your support. Just as we thank all of the brothers and sisters who support physically, who make dua, who make criticism constructive and destructive, uh, love and hate. Let alone those who donate and support. We thank each and every one of you. And after Allah's grace, our videos, our channel, our movement wouldn't be possible without the support, the love of the disciples. Allah Ta'ala. Fa'inan inshaAllah Ta'ala. Bismillah. As-salamu alaykum. We touched briefly on lost property within the Outside of outside of Mecca, um, can you give the ruling on picking something up and how long you have to wait? Uh, in an hour? Is that a ruling? With regards to outside of Mecca, picking up a belonging, a lost uh, belonging, how long do you have to wait? Can, can you pick it up? So on and so forth. Then in general, the general rule is, is that if it's something which is of a trifle, then you're allowed to take it and keep it without turning it into the lost and found, without announcing it. And obviously that's gonna be based off of your own discretion. Like I said, somebody may say $5 is nothing. And somebody may say no, a dollar, a bag or something that's, you know, I mean, no doubt about it, if you found a brand new cell phone on the floor, that's obviously something valuable. A wallet full of money and cards and IDs, that's something very valuable, nothing. But the general rule is that, that if it's something which is of a trifle, then it's allowed, you're allowed to what? Keep it. As far as if something of value, then you either want to leave it or you want to pick it up. And if you pick it up, you're going to hold it until someone comes and asks about it, or you're going to turn it in. Method. And obviously, when the person comes, and they ask about their possession, they heard that you have it, that you found it, and they give the necessary description of it, then you turn it over. Something taken by force. Okay, what about it? How is the kind of fly if the person's like, they said like you stole something or took something by force? Yeah. You look for them, ask the Lord allow you to find them, and if you can't, you give Sadaq on their behalf. Or give it to their descendants or family members. If they're gone, you give sadaq on their behalf, you make it still fall. Or even if the person is around, and let's say, for example, it's going to cause a major, major problem. But in general, you have to return the thing. And if that person isn't there, then you try your best with the next closest, the closest thing. Someone stole something from you. Anyway. Someone took something from you? your heart. No doubt about it. The Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned that you will that to adun al hukuk you will give the rights and the responsibilities to their people. On the day of judgment, the horned goat will have to pay for its goring to the hornless goat. Hatta yuqada to the that hadith yani ashatul qarna etc. So what's important is is that that's your heart. Wallahu alam. That's in brief. Tafadda, bismillah. What's the ruling in regards to, for example, as you mentioned, like it's haram to like hunt or do anything in, in Mecca, within the boundaries of the haram. So how would like the, like everything's not available, but how would that Pajaj in the past like do hunts for like food or like their own provision? Well, first and foremost is, if you're in Ihram, you can't hunt on land, period. As is clearly mentioned in the Quran, you're allowed to fish, 
anything from the sea is lawful game. But the moment you're on land, Mecca, outside of Mecca, you cannot what? Huh, period. As far as someone being in the haram, and they aren't a muhrim, they aren't a pilgrim, then there's an area in which you aren't allowed to hunt. Outside of that area, you're allowed to hunt. And obviously, anyone who's ever hunted, you know that sometimes you may have to chase the game, lead the game into this narrow passageway or to this trap or whatever the case may be, right? So there's hunting as a muhrim, and there's hunting outside of the haram, and there's an area in which you can never ever hunt, period. Allah Akbar. Oh, so let's say it, so in, in the time of Jahiliyyah, let's say you you have some you took some stuff, right? Um, what is what, what is now? What is a person? What is a person able to do with these things? Or what is a person to do? Can a person sell it? Does it have to give it back to them? Clear, like we mentioned before, you can't find the the, the owner. It was a very long time ago. I wasn't a Muslim. It was going to cause a major problem. Give it in charity. If you can't find a descendant or the relatives, give it in sadaqah. As far as if it's something that you can't give in sadaqah, it's hard, then make it still far. And give additional sadaqah and you move forward. What's important is, in brief, uh, there are many different scenarios of tawbah. Many scenarios. In which the tawbah is unorthodox. Such as ghiba. You can't just make toba between you and Allah. You have to fix it. But I can't go back and just talking about you. Some accept that. And some brothers may have a big problem with that. It may cause a fight, a fist fight, or a gun fight. Or I mean, or you may not ever look at me the same again. What do you mean he was back by me? So it's a mess. It's a problem. Or a possession that's stolen or taken. Or someone was shot and killed. I killed somebody. I got bodies. Unfortunately, coming from the inner urban city is I unfortunately where I come from is normal. Average per you know, you out there in the streets, you may have what? Several bodies. Alright, that was before I was Muslim. Or I was Muslim but I was ignorant, etc. I don't know where his family is. I don't have the idea. What do you do? So these are unorthodox or exceptional scenarios of Toba. The sin between you and Allah, all you need is the tawbah between you and Allah. That which pertains to people's honor, wealth, blood, then you can't just make tawbah, but you have to what? Give it back. But oftentimes you what? You can't give it back, right? I remember once, subhanAllah, a very interesting, good friend of mine from uh, UK, from Birmingham, he sent me a video clip of uh, one of the mashaykh, Sheikh Ali Al Halabi, may Allah have mercy upon him. He was giving fatawa, answering questions on a, a television program. So one day, the clip, the guy he called, Salam alaikum ya Sheikh, da da da, hayak Allah, kif halakum, blah 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 blah. And so, Sheikh, you know, wa alaikum salam, the normal pleasantries, kada kada, tafadda. What question do you have? And the question says, Ya Sheikh, the only thing that I want to tell you, and it he says, I was backbiting you, I was slandering you. And the Sheikh, he said, Hayak Allah, Barakallah Feek, Khalas, no problem, okay? Everybody can't do that, right? And many of us who will do that, we may say it with our tongues, but deep down inside, we feel differently. Just think about that, though. Even to do it outwardly, even if your heart isn't there, but just this, no problem. I was And Alhamdulillah, it's happened to me before. I've had brothers come up to me, well, what I mean? Literally. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh, you know, or maybe not Sheikh, Muhammad, <laughs> Muhammad ibn Munir. Huh? I just want to tell you, you know, I was slandering you, but you know, I'm sorry, or some people didn't say I was slandering you. Did you really say that? Alhamdulillah, you want some tea? Fuck off. It's no problem. It's no point in having beefs and, and being angry and irate at everybody for the rest of your life. It's, you're not going to get anywhere, right? And. Okay, big deal. Won't be the last. Allah, Allah. Allah, Right? So the point is, is that you may have to do things. You may, you may not be able to do the normal way. I can't give the money back. The person's gone. 
the apartment building which I used to sell drugs, what I did is I extorted this person, I, I murdered this person, the apartment building is, 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 a hot, is knocked down. I don't know where they are. So, you give sadaqa, you make it stay fog, you try your best to clean up the situation. What's important is, the point that I'm trying to get to is, is that it's very important. The fiqh of toba is that you move forward and do not get stuck in the past. Which is a trick of shaitan. Your toba is unaccepted because you didn't give it back. Your toba is unaccepted because you killed the person, you didn't pay the blood money, your life wasn't taken, etc., etc., etc. What can you do? What can I do? It was 10, 20 years ago. There's nothing I can do. I tried to make toba. You have to do what now? Move forward. That's the, the, the fact, right? Wallahu mm -hmm. alam. Amen. Uh. What's the ruling on cutting this part? Cutting that part? Yeah, you know I mean, if it's high up, it's one thing. The beard technically is the jawbone. So whatever is considered to be the what? The jawbone. The jawbone. The lihyain, you know what I mean? Wallahu alam. I'm Victor. The hadith regarding um, shape, shape all of it or leave all of it, is, is there a story? Like a, like a context to that hadith? There are several hadiths regarding that, al qaza And one of them is that the Prophet وسلم, saw a child. Some of his head was shaven, and other parts were left. And the Prophet وسلم, said, in one narration. And obviously that's a discussion in itself. Is it lawful for a Muslim to have an uneven haircut or hairstyle. What's important is there's clear context behind that. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, Wallah Alam, Allah knows best, but in most cases, there's a big possibility is that the child's head was shaven and kept in some type of manner or way that was resembling Jahiliya, mm -hmm. or some type of superstition, something like this. And there are many different uh, religions and races and peoples that have ritualistic hairstyles, whether it be Japan or other parts of the world, Tahiti, Papua New Guinea, Jamaica. et cetera, Jamaica, et cetera, in which there is a ritual, some type of spirituality behind the hairstyle, but not just with the dreads, but we're talking about shaving, shaving. Wallahu alam. Fala, fala. What is the rule in always being suspicious? Always being suspicious. SubhanAllah, it's very interesting that I had an idea of doing the khutbah, inshallah, on Friday on this. And not just suspicion, but surah dhan, having bad thoughts of Muslims. Now you spoiled it, so. Right, <laughs> and very rarely do I actually have the idea of doing the khutbah early on in the week. I just. <laughs> I can't think of something. Now I gotta <laughs> spoil it. Uh, <laughs> you flooded in my basement. JazakAllah <laughs> Khair. Now I gotta start over. Huh? What's important is, I'm with him, that's a problem. It's a big problem. Protecting yourself is one thing. I was reading in the Qayyim, it was explaining our Falkabayna Sultan with Ikhiraz. Having bad thoughts of people versus protecting yourself. So suspicion that's warranted versus suspicion which is just truly baseless. And Allah doesn't mention that all van is if them, but he says what? Some van. So there are context clues. There are things which clearly show and prove like war. And then there's a time in which I just have bad thoughts of you. The way you look, which your skin look like, or I just don't, I get a bad vibe. There's no karina, there's no karina. Be suspicious on guard, right? Mm -hmm. Also, a very important aspect of this issue is being naive. There's a time in which a believer should be, what? Naive. No doubt about that. Believer being naive, and maybe, Allah Allah, inshallah, even though it may be clear that it's the opposite, right? Only Allah knows what happened, what's going on. 
you practice being naive. And being naive sometimes, as they say, ignorance is bliss. It protects you from many problems and it allows your heart to remain safe and free from malice and rancor against Muslims. What do you mean? I don't know, Afi. Maybe the alcohol on him, maybe he had some cough syrup, maybe it's someone, you know, he walked down the street, someone threw a beer can at him, I don't know. It's clear he was drinking, it's not clear to me. Allah Allah, make an excuse for your brother. Practice being naive sometimes and that protects you from su'vah. And thinking negatively of Muslims, being suspicious of Muslims, which obviously leads to a person sometimes feeling and thinking he's above the rest. And I remember once, this is a true story, it's me and a brother, some years ago when I was early on, when I came to New York City, we went to Long Island. And we went to a, uh, an Italian ice place, what we call water ice, Italian ice, right? So we were in a section in which there weren't too many Muslims, maybe there weren't too many black people, whatever the case may be. So we're standing on the corner, and if the brother's watching this, he knows it's not a made up story. We're about to order our water ice or Italian ice, whatever method have you follow. And obviously we were the only Muslims out there and we were the only black people out there. And all of a sudden somebody drove by and they threw a can of beer out the window. And a can of beer landed at my foot and some of the beer got on my socks and my throat. Literally. The Kufar, it was, it was some, some uh, Kufar women out there, subhanAllah, they got mad and upset. They start cursing at the guy who drove by, and obviously he drove off. He didn't stop. They were cowardly. They start cursing at him, putting their middle fingers up. You this, you that, you effing jerk. Why would you do that? And he start apologizing to us. And we like, you know, no big deal. No harm, what? No fuck. The moral of the story is, if I walked away with my water ice, with my pretzel, etc., and I encountered another brother, we got back to Queens, he smells come on me. Mufti must have been what? <laughs> MashaAllah, right? His brother said, I wonder what's in that tea flask. Uh, one brother said, no wonder why you be doing all those classes and stuff. What's important is he smells the what? Old English or <laughs> Cognac or whatever else. But little does that brother know that someone threw beer on me or alcohol on me. So sometimes it is possible. And if you have immediate thoughts, nasty thoughts, I smelled alcohol, he must have been getting drunk. Most of these are wine though. Not saying that he's not. <laughs> huh? You get the point that I'm trying to make? Is that Allah knows best the situation. You never ever know. You might have lipstick on your throat collar, right? Yeah, huh? cool. Someone says, came from a girl's house. Some girl was kissing up on your neck. And he said, I just visited my homie. She gave me a hug, she gave me a kiss, and she kissed me on my neck. Or I have makeup on my shoulder, right? You obviously hugging up on a woman that's shorter than you. It's makeup, clearly. I said, no, that's for my daughter. My daughter had makeup on her face, I gave her a nice tight hug, and she left makeup on my throat. So you never ever know the situation. So I have good thoughts of the believers, have good thoughts of people, and we all know that the Prophet Sallallahu he rejected many people when they came to him, or they were brought to him, with regards to stoning or flogging. Go, get, leave. Tahid me, Ya Rasulullah. Purify me, O Messenger of Allah. No, go, go. Second, two, three times, the lady says, I want to be purified, I made zina. And that is, radiallahu anhu, the Sahabi that was stoned. We know that the Prophet why suddenly asked the Sahaba, why didn't you throw a sheet over him? So you see somebody making zina. They're doing it. And the Prophet said, why didn't you what? Act like you what? Didn't see. So that, that's very important. Most of us, we lose out on this. And we're just hasty and automatically judging somebody, thinking bad of someone. And this is very applicable to Dawah. I was going to mention this in my quote, very applicable to Dawah. He said this, oh, you have to mean this. And he's Kedah. And he said this. And he said to Kedah, he said, well, slow down. Slow down. It's an hour long talk. Maybe he explained what he meant in the next 30 seconds. Maybe he explained it in another book. Make an excuse instead of just thinking nasty of people. Immediately bringing the worst, nastiest interpretation that you can find. It's a big problem that we suffer from. 
والله تعالى اعلم تفضل يا اخي Is there any uh, specific uh, conditions as to how, like, <laughs> there any specific conditions regarding like you being capable of like doing what you And if if somebody is financially capable, what not, and still doesn't do it, is there any like repercussions or sin? Like, there are conditions for Udhiya for sure. Is that the person has the wealth, a person has the kudra to buy the animal, to purchase the animal without harming himself and his basic daily needs. Also, uh, that which pertains to this could be debt. Debt, you're in debt. There are people who want things, who need things from you. I need you to pay back my money. You want to spend $400 on the end. As far as, is Udhiya obligatory? Then there are different views among the ulama. And some say it is. Some say is that it's absolutely obligatory. Some say it's obligatory upon those who have the extra money. And some say that it's sunnah, period. Wallah wa. Take one from the line, Shalom. Mr. Hey, hey, Toronto, Ontario, Salam alaikum, Sheikh. What's the rule in a temple fade? Is it a Kazakh hairstyle? Is a temple fade a Kazakh hairstyle? We've mentioned that, explained that many, many times before. Try to avoid it if you can, Inshallah. I wouldn't say this, Haram. Wallah, Wallah. We show T.A. Ron's mother. I'm overseas and he meant this. What? I'm wrong. I'm going to tell you, should I follow? The you follow the Imam. If the Imam does the Qunut and the Fajr, you have to follow the Imam. He may be of those who believe that it's lawful and that it's Sunnah. What's important is in the majority of the Imam, the Imam has only been placed to be followed. Allah Wala. AM is connected to New York. Is fasting recommended during the Hajjah for the whole nine days? Is fasting recommended during the first nine days, the first ten days of the Hijjah? Well, obviously, many scholars, they state that. And they have proofs and evidences to support that. Allah Next question. You have this city. Huh? As part of Ottawa, Ontario, if I come in the last two accounts in the Asia prayer, do I make up the first two accounts and miss? You miss two rakahs of Isha. Imam Salam's out. You stand up, you finish your two rakah, you just recite the Fatiha. Um, if uh, natural, um, you the Milwaukee, Wisconsin, what book do you suggest for a beginner Arabic reader to get to get to understand Arabic and the Questions coming from Milwaukee. What book would you recommend for a beginner? Trying to learn Arabic, etc. I would say check out Andalus Institute, inshallah. See what he has, see what curriculum he has, inshallah. Wallah And initial SA from Montreal, Canada. Am I allowed to sell desserts to Kufal even if they might use it for their holidays? Selling desserts to Kufal even if they use it for their holidays. Well, it's lawful until proven to be unlawful. If we were to put that restriction, if the captain is going to use it for something, a vineyard, you sell grapes, you, you sell oat or wheat or hops and barley to a, a that's one thing, right? What's important is, is that in most cases, we'll all talk to them. Make sure the Wi-Fi is off, huh? No, it's not. It's, um... and, and, Hmm? Hmm? Is that in most cases, if you're selling lawful products, it doesn't matter when and how they buy them. Unless you yourself are selling a product which is a little shady, such as a Christmas tree. Tree is lawful, but you know what this type of tree is used for. You're selling fruitcake in December. Method. Turkey is good, actually. <laughs> uh, but exactly, you get the point I'm trying to make? Wallah wallah. Uh, uh, RA from Boston, Massachusetts. Advice to Muslims who deal with loneliness. You don't have any Muslim or non Muslim. Muslims who deal with loneliness. Well, in general, you need to have a tight relationship with the law. 
Ibn Qayyim mean, or he mentions and explains the power of the dhikr of Allah, and when a servant is connected to Allah, when a servant's heart isn't stained with sin and disobedience, is that Allah is this person will never ever be without company. And from the punishments of sins, is that it causes the servant to feel alienated and far from Allah. He doesn't feel like he can be close to Allah. That's a problem. So you need to tighten in your relationship with Allah. That's first and foremost. Secondly is, you need to get the necessary therapy. Extreme loneliness, chronic loneliness, so on and so forth. It may be a disorder. Maybe something off. Maybe an imbalance with yourself. In which you feel like you can't be around people or you can't keep relationships or you have to be by yourself, etc. And most importantly is balance. Time in which you're by yourself, time working with the people. And be selective with the people that you're with. Well, a lot of is blackmailing impermissible in Islam? For example, I won't buy you anything until you stop listening to music. I don't think that's blackmailing. I think that's more of a discipline. Blackmailing is more like, yo, call it. If you don't bring me publish those pictures or I'm going to spread your dirt. Or whatever, whatever. That's blackmail. There's a difference. And in most cases, people who blackmail, they blackmail for some type of worldly gain for themselves. This is not the case. Versus you tell someone, your brother, your son, your wife, your husband, if you don't stop smoking, I'm not going to such and such. You tell your daughter, if you don't stop talking to boys illegally, I'm not going to buy you no shoes for the E. Nothing. That's not blackmail. Some type of Islamic discipline. Blackmailing is, I need something, and if I don't get it from you, everyone's going to know about you. Well, all right. Which was a a Ontario, Canada. Is it legislated to recite a sign from the masjid, the masjid at the time of Sajid Tilawa, if not able to perform? Sajid Tilawa and Kefara to the I don't understand the question. Uh, initials SL from can you combine the benefits of as called the same as prayers, for example, two raka'ah will do and two raka'ah? Sit two raka'ah before you sit down. So if you came in the masjid and offered salat al or the sunnah before this prayer, etc., then that would suffice. And that is a time and an example in which you kill two birds with one stone, if that's the question. You should be be letting your case how do you deal with someone who does not want to use him or her and want to use different pronouns? Dealing with someone who doesn't want to use him and her and they want to use different pronouns. What's important is if you're in a professional setting, you gotta be professional in 2022. Personal setting, private setting, it's a different story. Yo, like, I don't care what you think you are. <laughs> You're a he, dude, <laughs> or you're a she, or it, or whatever. But obviously, in a professional setting, you might lose what, Elias? If you don't, huh? <laughs> Follow the modern <laughs> protocol. Long time. Initials MA, Buffalo, New York. What is the ruling and reality of white lies? What's the ruling and the reality on white lies? So we got black male and white lies, huh? <laughs> What's important is, um, a lot of them, I think, and a lot of them's best, that a white lie is what people will call overseas and kebib al basit. Diet lies. Meaning, something that's not like a harmful lie. It isn't a lie which is what? Harmful. It's not hurting anybody, it's not hurting anybody, it's not breaking anyone's heart, it's not violent, it's a white lie. It's something which is, it isn't intended, or something which is necessary, but it isn't, you know, causing harm to someone else. Right? What's important is, obviously lying is unlawful in Islam. And we know that there are times in which lying is lawful. And then there are times in which you aren't allowed to lie. And some scholars say even those hadiths regarding lying is an actual lie. But they say it is using an indirect expression, which is borderline 
lying. And someone could also interpret that as a white lie. Wallahu alam. Okay, inshallah. Stop here tonight. Subhanakum alhamdulillah. Shalom la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Thank you.